Welcome to this uh, quick tutorial on how to use the Open Therm Monitor. Uh, the Open Therm Monitor is a very useful device for fault finding what's uh, happening between an Open Therm controller and boiler. Obviously in the old days with 240 volt controls fault finding was quite easy. You used your multimeter to check where you had voltages. With Open Therm, because it's a communications protocol, you can't just check on voltages, you have to see what's going on. So the Open Therm Monitor can be obtained from the Intercast shop online. If you uh, go into Special Offers, Trade Only Deals, and uh, Internet's a bit slow today, and you will see it there, Open Therm Gateway, USB, UK Stock. These are made here in the UK and sold exclusively by the Intercast shop. Before you can use your monitor, you will have to download the software. And this can be found on the Open Therm Gateway site at this address here. And if you scroll down Windows, you'll see a click on otmonitor.exe. We'll ask you if you want to open or save. Save the file. And then uh, if you go to your downloads, you will find the file. Just click on that and it will install on your system. It's already installed on my system. So here is the Open Therm Monitor. You'll see there are four leads connected. Uh, a USB lead, which connects to USB port on your laptop. Either a 24 volt DC, or if you've got the mains version, a mains lead. And two cables, one for the boiler, one for the stat. Um, and these connect, as I say, just disconnect your thermostat from your boiler and connect these in between in series with the thermostat and the boiler. Polarity is not important. To open the Open Therm Monitor, once you've downloaded the software, click on the icon, and you'll see the program opens up, maximize it, makes it easier to see what we're doing, and check where they have a connection. So down in the bottom right corner, you'll see the red disconnected sign. So we go to options, connection, check our COM port. In this case, it's COM4. If you don't know which is your COM port, you can find it by going into your device manager. And if you look for ports COM and LPT, and you'll see prolific USB to serial COM port or something very similar, COM4. That tells you that we want COM4. So you can close the device manager and connect. If you get that message come up, just reconnect the USB. And then you'll see you've got your green connection down in the bottom right hand corner. So now your monitor is connected to your computer and close that one and you'll start to see the other option you may need to uh, enable is the monitor mode just go to monitor and done You'll start to see the parameters appearing at the top. So as we've got an Evo home controller connected, uh, it will just show a room temperature and a room set point of 20. This is quite normal. It's because the Evo home aggregates room temperatures and set points. If you click on the log, you'll see the actual commands going backwards and forwards. Uh, from the controller to the boiler and that tells you that everything is going backwards and forwards Back to our graph and we can see certain things starting to appear if you click on the line it tells you what they are so domestic hot water mode off So for heating mode off so we're not getting any call for heat from the controller at the moment flame status off obviously 
modulation level zero because the boiler is not actually firing. Uh, here, boiler water temperature, so the water temperature is slowly falling as uh, water is pumped around the system, but no heat input from the boiler. Domestic hot water temperature. Uh, this is a combi boiler. If we were to turn on the tap, we'd see that suddenly start to rise. At the moment, it's just showing the temperature of the sensor within the heat exchange block. And room temperature and control set point. Control set point is what the controller is actually asking the boiler for. One thing you may find with an EVA home controller after you've disconnected it and connected the monitor that the boiler doesn't appear to respond to the controller. Uh, there's a quick way around this. If you go to your EVO home controller, click on the uh, quick actions, turn the heating off, and then a few seconds later, cancel that. That will uh, re-establish the communication. Not sure why it does that, but uh, if, you, if you do get a problem where it appears not to be communicating, that's how you get over it. Uh, as you can see, uh, we now have central heating mode on. Our flame status is on and our boiler water temperature is starting to increase. So at the moment, the system is calling for heat and the boiler is running. The target temperature on the boiler at the moment is 55 degrees maximum. Uh, what you will find on the intercast boiler is that this will overshoot by roughly five degrees. So in a short while, we will see the uh, boiler water temperature there get to about 60 and then uh, the boiler will cut off. So here we are a few minutes later and we can see that the boiler water temperature got up to 60, the burner shut off and the boiler water temperature will gradually uh, reduce until the boiler kicks in again. This, as I say, this system is an Evo home system on an intergas boiler and it does have underfloor heating with an HM80 mixer. One of the quirks of Evo home with the HM80 is that when the underfloor is calling for heat, it gives us a control set point of 90. Not sure why it does that, but uh, obviously it will never get to that temperature because our boiler maximum temperature is capped on the boiler. In this case, as I said, at 55 degrees. Our boiler is currently in pump overrun, uh, so and uh, there is an anti-cycle time set on the boiler, so it will take a little while before the boiler uh, kicks in the burner again and the temperature will start to rise. Now you can see here uh, this little blue blip here. The hot tap was turned on very briefly. So boiler went into hot water mode and you'll see the hot water temperature rose slightly. Um, that was only for a couple of seconds and then back to central heating mode. And the burner is now reignited uh, to get the boiler back up to temperature. You can see from the slope of this curve here that the water temperature is increasing very slowly uh, we've got a long slow burn time there and uh, the boiler is actually modulated right down at the moment and that's why we get a very shallow curve there you can see that we had another very short hot water demand there and consequently the boiler temperature went up the hot water temperature went up and then once the Hot water demand had finished back to heating and, and once again we've got this very flat line on our boiler temperature uh, that shows us that the output from the boiler is is matched quite well to the uh, input so it's modulating well doing its job what we're looking for is a long slow burn on here rather than lots of on-off cycles uh, so that uh, shows at the moment uh, the underfloor heating is calling for heat and one radiator um, from the EVO home. So just to recap on the open therm monitor, you've got your graph view 
um, and you can see real time what's going on. You can look at the log view, which tells you the actual status is going backwards and forwards to and from the boiler. You've also got this one statistics, uh, which again gives various information as to what's happening. Um, and you can look down there and see all sorts of different information, which some of it's useful, some of it you won't be that worried about. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you have any queries, email me on info at mwtheplumber.co.uk.